Today we're going to review the TR181 Vintage Holton model. This one's an older one from 1978 or 9, according to the serial numbers. I've had it for a few weeks. I'm about to sell it. Just thought I'd give my thoughts and play a few notes on it. So immediately, let's be honest, the structure of the F valve is terrible. I've never had this in my life. When I'm playing, my chin nudges against it very easily and opens the F valve. So I'd need that completely re-bent or restructured. Possibly even have this part with the spring sorted off, which would make it a little bit of a bigger job. I'm sure a good tech could do it. But that's frustrating. I've, I've never come across this uh, with any other trombone quite so severe. Love to hear your comments. Are the newer models like that too? Anybody else struggle with this? I know this is a loved bass trombone, so that makes it all the more interesting. Very interesting about this Holton is the bell size, in my opinion. So the standard size these days is a nine and a half inch bell, like the canstall here. I doubt you'll see the difference on the video. This is a 10 inch bell. You don't see it quite as often, in my opinion. A little bit bigger, what does that mean? In general, it means you have to work a little bit harder. You've got a warmer, a wider sound. So this is independent, by the way, two independent valves. The D valve, so both valves down together, is on the verge of too low. So we're, we're having to push all the way in here in both valves um, to get the D in tune. It's, it's in tune all the way in, so there's, there's really not much lee leeway. A friend of mine uh, from the Netherlands just wrote saying he actually needed to have it shortened. So this could, could be a systemic thing by Holton. Um, again, I wonder, have they improved this with the newer models? It's kind of strange uh, for, for that to be happening. It's not the biggest job in the world, but it shouldn't be coming out of the factory like that. I'm just very surprised with such a massive uh, brand like Holton, it's such a beloved horn that, that this would be happening. Not quite as open there. You probably heard I wasn't centered to begin with. I did find the sound after a few notes, but it wasn't immediately there, right? If you're interested in uh, other pro tips, check out my Golden Sound Masterclass, free video masterclass, three part video with PDFs. Sign up below for free. It's phenomenal, said uh, a recent user. Testimonials to be found on the link. Hope you get value from it. Please subscribe to support this channel. Get me to do more comparisons, more reviews of instruments. Uh, it's a great joy to share this with the trombone community bass trombone community. In terms of the slide, it's fantastic. Slides very fast. There's actually the, the tiniest of dents on the inner slide, but in my opinion, you don't feel that at all sliding. So that's 
a really fantastic slide. Um, I'd give it a, a nine out of 10, to be honest. I haven't, I haven't fe felt many better considering this is from the late seventies. That's also incredible. It's been kept very well, to be honest, but, uh, there's no, there's no wear on it either. There's no rot or any of those things, which for example, are on typical on this old uh, Yamaha 612. There's always that, that rot on the, the bottom of the inner slide. Valves, have a listen. A little clunky, but again, I'd say that's standard for this age, late 70s. Um, it has this strange plastic covering over it. I think most people would get that changed to the, the mini ball these days. You could probably get a bit of sound out of it. To be honest, I find it's, it's not too much. Um, will a microphone pick, pick it up? Will, listen listen to the recordings that i just made i think it's it's fine it's definitely a pro level horn can work on the highest level wonderful sound as i said great response in in all registers a little higher um, maintenance or a little harder work in the high register the low register speaks very well not the best speaking have a look at the comparison video i made the, with the yamaha and the canstall um both speak quicker um, but this is still on a very good level in the even in the double valve register <laughs> So that phrase was killing me just now jumping to that be natural the killer note right on the bass trombone just now i tried it i think the third time i got it with the signal relax more with a smaller with a smaller bell like the cancel here you wouldn't have to give that signal for it to come it would speak quicker here you you kind of have to let go more it's a different style of playing the holton club might uh, confirm this it is a different blow it's very interesting you kind of have to let go more than compared to other horns so uh, it's really a beautiful thing take some getting used to as i made the adjustment with these three horns in the other video this holton was always the the black sheep you could say it didn't center immediately but when it did it was worth it if you know what i mean um, it's rewarding when you get used to it so it's not a great one for you know switching quickly if that's what you're into uh, unless you're only playing Holton, but uh, again, I've got a, I've got the TR183 as well, the single valve with a smaller bell that doesn't have that way of playing where you have to kind of let go. That's, it seems typical for this size of bell and this Holton model. Check out the forums. I, forums, I believe I've heard a lot of discussion about this about the the Holton blow. <laughs> let me know in the comments uh, if you know what I'm talking about. Love to hear about the 169 as well. I think, isn't that the holy grail of the Holtons? Um, I believe Dave Taylor's first pro pro horn in New York. Uh, I haven't had my hands on that one yet, but um happy to receive one to make another video if anybody's, uh, if anybody's up for it. I mean, west of Germany. <laughs> so that was, by the way, a jazz funkitude from Eliezer Aharoni, the great book, um, the non-classical bass trombone. That's really got some killer um, bass trombone etudes, which really will test your agility in the in the double valve range. There's there's no way around it, and there and there's great tunes. They're very cheesy '80s style backing, but I recommend it. Great play along CD with uh, Mr. Misha Davis uh, whacking down the the tunes. So the bottom line is this has a wonderful, warm, rich sound, very unique. Um, I'd call it a kind of dark brown caramel sound. Um, 
definitely goes into that wonderful dark territory, which I would argue the bass trombonist is looking for. It's a little wider, of course. It may not fit with all sections. It may be a little too wide. Um, depends on the context. I would say in possibly in small ensemble settings, this could be what you're looking for um, to give more of a foundation. It's great playing duets with students, I've noticed. But again, it may not be blending as well. You may be missing some overtones with your colleagues who are, of course, playing much smaller bells, the, the tenor players. So that's something to consider. Uh, I wouldn't give this to to young students necessarily if they're already fighting with the high register. The high register is simply more difficult here. It sucks more air and you have to work harder. So consider that. If, if you're a high register pro or expert, then this might be great for you if you're a really robust player. But if you're already struggling there and you're looking to win auditions for university or other auditions, then um, I'd be very careful going to this size of Bell. Be well and let us know what you think of this Holton, other Holtons. What's next? See you next time. I might, may have a bigger chin than most, but um, it's not that big, is it? It shouldn't be happening. Um,